As soon as your product gets in the hands of customers, you're gonna get feedback. And ultimately that feedback is exactly what you're looking for, but how you work with that feedback will determine whether the product has long-term success or not. What I mean by that is when we go and give the product to users, they're immediately gonna have feedback on exactly what they want. They exactly want a ex certain experience or a certain feature, and they're gonna tell you exactly what they want in the product. Now, that's great and all, but if you listen to that, and build it exactly how they say, you're gonna end up with like a Frankenstein of a product. Product does this weird thing for this customer, this weird thing for this other customer, and this other thing for this customer. You've probably seen this. Any big enterprise software tends to end up looking like Frankenstein because you get these weird situations where like, this only applies to this big, massive customer that wants this in this certain way, their model's a certain way. So how do you avoid making Frankenstein? What do you need to do to prevent your, your product from doing being different things to different people? And the answer is you really have to understand the problem. When you go to build a software product, you probably had a problem that you were looking to solve and you loved that problem and you wanted to solve it very, very well. Number one, stay focused on what you were originally trying to, to solve. Because what happens, what tends to happen is you're solving a problem right here. And as soon as you solve that problem, your customers are gonna have problems on the outside, adjacent problems. We've talked about this before, adjacent problems. Now you can start to get over and, and integrate and build stuff in those areas, but you cannot be distracted, especially if you're solving the problem well that you originally sent out to, to solve, you can't get distracted from solving that problem. So as customers bring you feedback, you need to look at that feedback through that lens. How does it apply to the problem that we're solving? Is this new input that we were getting to better understand that problem? better understand the problem that our customers are having? Many times it is. Sometimes it's something adjacent, but a lot of times you'll get feedback as to, okay, we have this weird situation in the product that you're not solving. That is where you actually take that feedback, pull out their solution. You need to keep the solution out and really understand the problem. In my past, I've been in many situations where I built products that I didn't understand the problem well enough. And I ended up building solutions that customers brought to me because I did not understand the solution they were bringing to me and the problem that it was meant to solve. And every time I went down that path, I ended up with some Frankenstein features on this product that we either later had to hide or get rid of, or ultimately didn't serve the majority of our customers. So this is my warning to anybody else building a product and kind of a reminder for myself is don't add something to the product until you truly understand how it's going to affect the majority of the customers that your product was intended to solve. Do that, you'll avoid the Frankenstein problem and, and you'll end up with an amazing cohesive product that solves the majority of the customer's problems. We hope you enjoyed the video today. For more tips and best practices in software development, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube and like this video.